He's guilty. Dylan Roof has been found guilty on 33 counts of murder for the deaths of nine people of God at Mother Emmanuel Amy Church last June. In this edition of Quintess Ghost Ups, I speak exclusively with the church's historian, Liz Olsen. Liz, <laughs> it's so good to see you. It's good to see you too, Quentin. Yes, ma'am, I appreciate this. This I, is our what? Uh... <laughs> uh, this is our, well, we won't put a number. <laughs> <laughs> but um, let me turn to something serious. Uh, Judge, Judgment Day. Judgment Day. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a good day mm. for South Carolina, for the nation, for the world. But especially it's a good day for the families. Because mm. I understand that Polly and Felicia walked out smiling out of the courtroom. Because I think so far justice has been served. Mm. Mm. And as you know, the Postal Board headline says this. Guilty, 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 guilty. 33 times that was said in, you know, after the verdict in the trial. Um, when you heard that, what did you say? Well, I was not at the trial, but I got, the, which we all have these iPhones. Yes. <laughs> and the minute it is, and I heard the click, and I really just went to it the minute after the two hours. Right. And... I'm saying this has saved Charleston. Mm. You know, a lot of persons are saying that if this perpetrator had gotten away with murder nine times over, something had to be done. done. And particularly with the Slager being a hung jury, I don't think Charleston could have taken this kind of hit because the world is on us. And I feel that the I feel that the verdict has saved Charles. Mm. That's all I feel. And you talk about the family members. Malcolm Graham actually tweeted this on uh, Twitter, that is, around 4 o'clock this afternoon. He basically said this, quote, Racism, discrimination, and hatred was put on trial in Charleston and lost 33 times. 33 times. That's right. And, and, I, and I'm saying just, we're saying the same things they, in different ways. Right, right. Uh, all of these things, the world is on Charleston for the last year and a half. You've almost two years, you've found that people have been wondering what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. The sad part about it, in my opinion, is that the families had to go through this mm -hmm. a second time. Mm -hmm. They, I, which means that as a member of my church, I know all of these people. Right. Uh, during the day when all of my friends were down in the courtroom, I felt that. Uh, I, I, I can read it, yeah. I am experiencing it, but I think today is a good day. I usually write down what happens on a daily basis. Right. So I can say December 15th has had some meaning for me because I feel that my church, uh, Susie Jackson, yeah. and Ethel Lance, right. and Cynthia Hurd, and Tawanza Sanders, and my pastor, Clemente Pinkney, yeah and certainly Sharonda Singleton, oh, yeah. and Mara Thompson, and the Payne Middleton doctor. Whose birthday is today, 51? 51 today. Yeah. All of those things that are happening. So which means that December 15th can go down in history where justice has turned the corner. Speaking of history, Governor Nikki Haley tweeted this out just recently at 3.50. She says this, quote, It is my hope that the survivors, the family, and the people of South Carolina can find some peace in the fact that justice has been served. What's peace in your mind? Well, I'm saying, as I, I read it too, and I'm listening to it, and I'm saying it's peace within. It's peace for me as a member of Emmanuel. Right. I'm not speaking for the people of Emmanuel, but as the church's historian and archivist, I can't wait until Sunday morning mm. when I go to my church and I can see probably uh, peace engulfing the rest of the, of the congregants. I feel that I, if I feel peace within myself, I have spoken to about it about five or six times. I think I went to dinner a few minutes ago, and that was the topic of the conversation. Wow. So my thought processes have knows no bounds. Mm. Of course, you know, happiness is not something that you can 
tweet about somebody's getting the death penalty. Right. But the death penalty was done nine times mm -hmm. over on the 15th of June. Mm -hmm. And as I read the transcripts and listened to the videotapes and listened to the perpetrator, who, in my opinion, showed no remorse for the crimes. So I have to find some peace. So I like that word. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was upstairs watching the news and listening to the comments of people. So I'm thinking that for uh, probably for the next couple of weeks, a month, or even a year, this verdict will resonate around the world. Speaking of uh, next month and whatnot, uh, as you know, the sentencing phase will take place, I believe, on January 2nd. And I know that this particular guy wants to represent himself. Uh, when you hear that, what sticks out to you? I'm thinking that it's January 3rd because right. um, so we find out that the, the second is a Monday, so it will be Tuesday, January 3rd when, of 2017 when the penalty phase will kick in. And from what I could understand, the, the jurors, the 12 jurors, will come back and they will decide whether or not he will get the death penalty or he will face life in prison without parole. Uh, sometimes I'm not hard-hearted, but I for an eye, two plus two. There you go. And let me, you talk about Sunday morning when you go back to Mother Emanuel. Well, let me ask you this, Liz. We all talk to people who you know, died and they're in heaven and, you know, we can talk to them spiritually. If you were to talk to those nine victims right now, what would you tell them? Well, if I could talk to them, I'm saying peace be still. Mm. Uh, justice has been served. Uh, the jurors have done their job. The nine families who attended the court, and I talk to them on a daily basis because I get their feelings as they get to the point. I was talking to one of the survivor's families night before last, and she was saying, Miss Austin, it's a good thing I wasn't sitting there because I just felt like beating him up. So, which means that at that time, they didn't know what was going to happen. But tonight, I probably will talk to a couple members of the families. And I'm sure when I talk to you again, I can say what they have said. But I think that uh, they say the Lord doesn't come when he wants when He wants it, but he's always on time. That is true. So I'm thinking he's an on-time God. That is true. Amen to that. Amen. Liz Olson, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this. I I like the fact that the community's voices are heard and certainly for Ma Mother Emmanuel, for the Mother Church of the South, mm -hmm. I feel that the Lord has stepped in yes. to save our city. I agree with that completely. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you.